Welcome to Circuit Master Class, your go-to channel for everything in power systems, transmission, and distribution engineering. Please subscribe to our channel and click the like button if you truly like the video, and we will be able to give you a clear idea. Please don't forget to leave a comment on which topic you'd like to see in the next video. Your comment is most important to us. Don't forget to check out circuitmasterclass.com for in-depth blogs and bonus content. We have provided the website link below in the description. Let's get started. Let us have a discussion on CT saturation. In this video, we will mainly focus on the behavior of the CT secondary current during core saturation. Before diving into the actual discussion, let us recall the working principle of a current transformer. This will help us clearly understand the deviation from proper current transformation between the primary and secondary once the core gets saturated. When we connect the CT primary in series with the load line, the current flowing through the CT primary is nothing but the current in the load line or the electrical line. Now, suppose the load line carries a pure sinusoidal current. That means the CT primary current is pure sinusoidal. This is the primary current waveform through the CT primary. This current creates a magnetic field in the CT core, which in turn produces magnetic flux in the core. As the current increases, the flux in the core also increases, and when the current decreases, the flux also decreases. So the flux due to the primary current in the CT core follows the waveform of the CT primary current. As the primary current varies sinusoidally in both magnitude and direction, the flux created by the primary current also has the pure sinusoidal waveform. This means the flux also alternates in the positive and negative directions in a sinusoidal pattern. This alternating flux links with the CT secondary winding. According to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, this changing flux induces a voltage across the CT secondary winding. If the secondary circuit is connected to a burden, this induced voltage causes a current to flow through the CT secondary circuit. Therefore, the secondary current will follow the primary current. The secondary current will have the same sinusoidal waveform, but with reduced magnitude. This is ideally how the secondary current appears in the CT secondary winding. From another perspective, we can say that the induced voltage across the secondary winding is caused by the changing flux produced by the primary current in the core. Hence, there must be some response from the secondary winding to oppose this changing flux. That is why the induced voltage in the secondary winding causes a current to flow that creates a flux opposing the primary flux. The secondary winding follows the variation of the primary flux in the core and opposes it by producing its own flux at each instant of the primary flux waveform. This is how the secondary winding produces an exact replica of the primary current. Now, Suppose the primary current increases. After a certain value of the primary current, the CT core becomes saturated. This means the primary current can no longer produce flux beyond the maximum flux carrying capability of the core. As a result, the primary current stops producing additional flux in the core at that magnitude. After that instant, there will be no further increase in flux. Hence, the flux waveform becomes flat from that point as there is no more change in the flux. Consequently, the voltage across the secondary winding collapses because, according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the induced voltage in the CT secondary is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage with respect to time. When this rate becomes zero due to core saturation, no voltage is induced in the secondary winding leading to voltage collapse. As the voltage collapses, there is no electromotive force left to circulate current in the secondary winding. As a result, the current also drops to zero at that point. In other words, the secondary current drops down to the zero axis. Once the CT becomes saturated, it does not return to an unsaturated state until a reverse magnetic force is applied to the core to randomize the magnetic dipoles again. We can consider that the CT core contains a large number of magnetic dipoles. Under normal conditions, these dipoles are randomly oriented. However, when a magnetic field is applied to the iron core, 
these dipoles begin to align along the direction of the applied magnetic field. As the strength of the magnetic field increases, more and more random dipoles align along the field direction. At the saturation point, all available dipoles in the core become aligned with the applied magnetic field and no more dipoles are left to align. Even after the primary current reaches its peak and begins to reduce, the dipoles, having already aligned, do not reorient themselves randomly. They will only return to a random state when a sufficiently strong magnetic force is applied in the opposite direction. This entire phenomenon can be explained based on typical B-H curve of a ferromagnetic core. This is the nature of magnetic dipoles. They cannot align in a specific direction without an external magnetic field. Once aligned, they cannot randomize again instantly until an external magnetic field in the opposite direction is applied. During the next half cycle of the primary current, the magnetic force reverses. This reversed magnetic force is what helps bring the CT core out of saturation. It acts in the opposite direction, providing the necessary external magnetic field to randomize the previously aligned dipoles. As a result, the dipoles begin to reorient, allowing the core to once again respond to changes in the primary current and resume normal transformation. After reaching the value of the primary current, during the next half cycle, beyond the saturation level, the core again becomes saturated. Therefore, the secondary current will again collapse in the same rhythm as it did in the previous half cycle. This pattern will continue until the primary current drops below the saturation threshold. If we observe the secondary current alone on the screen, it appears like this. Obviously, this is not a sinusoidal waveform. It is a distorted one. This distortion may introduce harmonics into the secondary current. Hope you got the basic idea. We have discussed the saturation phenomenon of a current transformer with symmetrical primary current. However, there is another kind of saturation that occurs in the core due to asymmetric current in the primary circuit. Asymmetric high current in the primary circuit is mainly caused by a system fault. That topic will be discussed in another video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like and tap the notification bell. Got questions or want us to cover a specific topic? Leave a comment. Thank you.